New type of angle today is an inscribed angle. Thus far, we've talked about central angles, and we have talked about the arc that is opposite that central angle. We've talked about major arcs, minor arcs, and semicircles as well. So to start off, we'll look at this GeoGebra exploration. And I want you to pay attention to the orange and the blue angles. So as we look at this GeoGebra circle, we have two types of angles here. One of them is that central angle that you're used to seeing. Okay. The other is what's called an inscribed angle. And in just a moment, we're going to define inscribed angle so that you know the difference and the distinction between the two. So watch what happens as I drag this little slider. Okay. So A is a central angle. Angle B is an, ins is an inscribed angle. So Maddie, what's the difference between the two? How are they related? Watch what happens as we move. B has a, an orange and a blue. A has how many oranges, how many blues? Two. So when we go from B to A, it's not enough to just put one orange, one blue in there. A is much larger, isn't it? How much larger? Two times. Okay. So the central angle is double that inscribed angle. Okay, thank you. Everybody cool with that? Now watch what happens as I move my point D around. I can make the blue angles larger, and the central angle is still twice as big as that inscribed angle, isn't it? Move C a little bit more. Central angle double the inscribed angle. Okay? So the central angle is an angle with the center as its vertex. The inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle. Make sense? So let's define those. So an inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle and whose sides are chords of the circle. Okay, guys, stop. So an inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. Sorry. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle and whose sides are radii of the circle. Central angle Vertex center, sides radii, inscribed angle, vertex on the circle, sides are chords. So angle D is the inscribed angle, and angle A is the central angle. And when we last talked about central angles, we talked about how the arc opposite that central angle is equal to the measure of the central angle. Okay. All right, so... Next slide is about an intercepted arc. An intercepted arc is an arc that lies between two rays 
or segments or two lines. Intercepted arc is an arc that lies between two lines, rays, or segments. So D angle D is our inscribed angle there. What arc does angle D intercept? And CB, exactly, minor arc CB. So angle D is an inscribed angle. Arc CB is an intercepted arc. Okay. Everybody got that one written down? Okay. So we want to find the measure of the indicated arc. So first of all, before we do that, we have to know one key thing, and you just told me this just a moment ago with the exploration that we did. The measure of an inscribed angle is one half the intercepted arc. So that's a key idea. You want to make sure that you have that written down in your notes. The measure of an inscribed angle is one half of its intercepted arc. Measure of an inscribed angle is one half of its intercepted arc. So in our example, we have arc CB, so this purple arc. And we want to know what its measure is, and we know that the inscribed angle that intercepts that arc, angle D, is 50 degrees. So how many degrees is arc CB? Not quite. This angle's 50, and an inscribed angle is half of its arc. So if this is 50, the arc has to be 100. And an inscribed angle is one half of its intercepted arc. So if this is 50, the arc has to be 100. Okay. Your notes don't have this intercepted arc measure. So put 68 near that arc. And if that arc's measure is 68 degrees, how much will its intercept, its inscribed angle be? 34. Does everybody understand why? The measure of arc CB is 100 degrees, twice the 50. So if you have the angle, double it to get the arc. And if you have the arc, take half of it to get the angle. Make sense? So math is not hard, right? We're doubling or halving. Okay? It's just that we have to know the vocab and the theorems and the properties. So you want to study your notes. 68 was not on there. So you need to write it in for me. Nope. All we did was took 68 divided by 2 to get the 34. And we took 50 times 2 to get the 100. What's that? Yeah, sometimes we may have to use our semicircle knowledge, or we may have to use the other arcs in the circle to figure it out. So they're not going to, they'll be a little bit um, tricky, or not really tricky, but they'll, they'll make you work a little bit for these. Okay? They'll make you use the prior knowledge that you have. All right, so first of all, the next thing we want to do is look at the measure of arc, minor arc IK. 
So here's arc IK. And we know that its inscribed angle is 84 degrees. So how are we going to find the measure of arc IK? Let's put the phone away. Multiply by 2. 84 times 2 is 168. So the measure of arc The measure of arc IK is 168 degrees. Okay. That was 84 times 2. We have the angle. We double it to get the arc. Okay. Now, what do you think the measure of angle L is going to be? 84. Why is it 84? Right. uses that same intercepted arc, right? So we're going to divide by 2 to get the 84. Okay. So if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, they're going to be equal, aren't they? Their measures will be equal. Another key idea. You've got some room. Find a place to write it. I would write it near that image on your note sheet. If two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, they have to be congruent. Braxton, you don't get to use my pencils if you're going to ruin the thread. I'm putting them back. Thank you. I appreciate it. I saw one that was extended a long ways out. Must have been that way when you got it. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Everybody done with this one? Thank you. Okay. Here goes the next one. So not hard math. You just have to know of things and keep track of it. There's a lot of a lot of properties. All right. So we've got this pretty graph and or pretty image. And we're going to go to GeoGebra and see what's happening with this. So first of all, what kind of figure is inside of this circle? A quadrilateral, OK? Quadrilateral has four sides, four angles, right? Watch what happens as I drag my slider. What happened? What does it mean? Why did they pop those lines in place? They form a straight line. There's, they add up to 180. They are another word for that. Supplementary, okay? We have two two angles that form a straight line, so they're supplementary. All right, so let's think about that. Which two angles are those? F is pink, okay? Is it C and D? Are the orange and, and green? Okay, so the pink went with went to the orange side. So pink and orange are supplementary. Blue and green are supplementary. Maddie, please. They form a linear pair, so they're going to add up to 180 degrees. So how are blue and green related? They're opposites. They're not equal. They're opposite and they're supplementary. Pink and orange are also opposite and supplementary. And it doesn't matter how big those angles are, provided they're on the circle, they're still going to form a straight line, a linear pair. Okay? So back to the PowerPoint. A quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if its opposite angles are supplementary. Sure. 
which means we can read it both ways. A quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if its opposite angles are supplementary. And if a quadrilateral's opposite angles are supplementary, it can be inscribed in a circle by conditional. So a quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if its opposite angles are supplementary. So opposite angles being supplementary, what does that mean? Cassidy, if angle N is 70 degrees, if angle N is 70 degrees, how much will angle P be? Angle N is 70 degrees. It's not 70 as well because they're not congruent, but they're supplementary. So what does that mean? No, they add up to that's complementary. 180. So what's 180 minus 70? It's 180 minus 70. 110 degrees. Everybody agree? So angle P is 110 degrees. Everybody understand and see why? Okay. Opposite angles are supplementary, so N and P add up to 180. So angle N plus angle P have to add up to 180 degrees. So what does angle P have to be? 110. All right, now, what about O? O is opposite from which angle? Q, which is 86, so what's 180 minus 86? 94. It's adding. There is not that much, not very difficult, right? Okay. They're supplementary. Okay? But you have to remember those properties when it comes time. Okay? The math is not hard, just a lot of vocabulary. Um, yes. 180 minus 86 is 94. All right, last concept. Okay. If a right triangle is inscribed in a circle, if a right triangle is inscribed in a circle, the hypotenuse is the diameter of the circle. If a right triangle is inscribed in a circle, the hypotenuse is the diameter of the circle. And that makes sense, right? What type of arc do I have here? From S to T. A semicircle. What's the measure of a semicircle? 180. So we have a diameter. Its measure of the central angle and the semicircle are 180 degrees. So that makes angle U, which is an inscribed angle, has to be equal to what? 90. So they won't likely put the 90 degree mark here. They'll be a little coy and tease you with it. Okay, give you enough information, but not a lot. Okay. So if 4x equals 90, Brandon, what's x? If 4x equals 90, what's x? 90 divided by 4. 
which is, well, 90 divided by 2 is 45. And 45 divided by 2 is 22.5. Okay. The 90 comes from the fact that this right this triangle is inscribed in a semicircle, right? The diameter is its hypotenuse. That means this has to be a 90 degree angle. Also, a semicircle, half of the intercepted arc has to be 90 degrees. 90 divided by 4. Okay. That's all you have to do. Notes are done. Assignment is listed.